Hi. So, what I'm doing today is I'm going to start on the background, and I'm going to do it quite quickly. I'm going to rough in um, some of the darker areas first. I don't know how much of this I'm going to use. This is the image I'm going f uh, working from. It's uh, a distorted version of a painting by Henry Rayburn, who was a, a Scottish uh, Regency painter. Um, and I thought it would go quite nicely, there was a lot of green in it. Um, and I thought it would give a, a sort of an exaggerated sense of perspectival space, maybe, or just like as if the, the figure's rushing towards us or um, the background's just suddenly receding. And so I thought that, that would be quite interesting. I don't know how much of this I'll, I'll, I'll include. Uh, I tend to be like this with the background. Um, I tend to like, at the moment anyway, tend to um, leave in these areas um, or some areas of, of the um, of the ground layer. Uh, and so yeah, similar to, to this one, you can see that um, this bit here is sort of just disappearing as a few brush strokes on there and it's, you know, but other parts of it have been painted quite fully and um, I think, uh, I think it was a, was it Gainsborough or was it uh, Reynolds, maybe it was a Reynolds, uh, that I was, I used parts of the sky background. So this is where I, I, I steal things mm -hmm. from other painters, uh, or oh, appropriate, appropriate, um, that, that's a good word, isn't it? It's not as bad as stealing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, and, and obviously distort them and make them my own, but yeah, I thought I'd yeah, just borrow parts of history, you know, at random. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to get started. What we have here is um, a bunch of uh, tints. So we've got um, some titanium white mixed in with all of these different colours. Uh, we've got some ultramarine blue. Payne's grey has sort of come into the mix a bit. Same with Darlow green. Um, still working with ochre and and uh, the sienna uh, to a certain extent. And it, I, I've just mixing up the darker areas or the darker colours that I can see in this in this image. Um, so I'll be I'll be adding them on. This is where I got to um, at the moment. I, as you can see, there's rough areas of, I suppose, tone, and it, it's kind of the, the right colour. Uh, it will evolve uh, into sort of a, a, a more sort of worked version, probably at the top, and just be a bit more sketchy down at the bottom, probably by the end. But I don't know. Um, and then after I've done that. Uh, then I can work more into the figure and 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 then finally do a uh, glazing that makes the entire thing come together um, but I will film a bit more on the the next part of the uh, the background tomorrow here we are uh, day two of the of the background um, I've blocked in a few other bits uh, up here and, and down here, uh, but it will get progressively darker uh, today, uh, and then I'll start working on the figure again. But I've realised I haven't actually spoken too much about why I do what I do, and uh, who this guy is. This is a hero, this is my son, um, and you know, why I, I do 
uh, sort of Regency style paintings at the moment and, and all of that and I've been very careful not to talk too much about exactly why I do what I do because I don't want to uh, colour people's um, their own thoughts about it because it's important sometimes a, a painting can resonate with you and, and suddenly when you hear exactly what it's about it might not resonate the same way and so it's nice so nice for people to, to find their own way into your work keep it as subjective as possible um, but uh, I, will, I will say that these works are my own commentary on, on what's going on at the moment um, you know I've been focusing on the Regency period uh, so that was quite an important part in British history it put period of empire and aristocrats making lots of money and you know not too dissimilar to what's going on at the moment maybe not aristocrats but large corporations and billionaires but um, <clears throat> basically I'm interested in the fact that as British people we lean on history in, in a phenomenal way um, the media like to talk about it quite a lot uh, politicians if they want us to do something they tend to um, bring up a, a sort of a patriotic uh, feeling and talk about past achievements and we were great and we're going to be great again and so I think I, I've been taking this period of history that is supposed to be one of our, our one of our best and making it unsafe and, and making it weird and sort of poking fun of it, poking fun of myself as well in, in a funny sort of way because I, I love history, I love tradition uh, but I also realise that uh, you know we we remember it in the way that we want to um, and uh, you know somehow it, we we remember it in a, in a, um, a very rosy way and uh, and so I'm just sort of trying to take the sheen off it slightly and, and make it unsafe and subvert it slightly and, and subvert these um, these paintings of, of power and opulence and make them weird um, so yeah that's that's kind of where I'm coming from in all of this. That's why there's distortion and I'm making the backgrounds kind of weird and, and, and strange and warped and, and that's that's why I'm doing it. Anyway, um, hopefully that doesn't colour your uh, your views on them too much and you can still find whatever you, you want in them, you know, um, that's important. Uh, so today, you know, I'm starting with uh, a dark palette, uh, more Payne's grey, uh, Tharlo green, ultramarine, um, and uh, some, I can't remember what that is, I think it's a, hmm, it's an umber, it's a raw umber. So, there you go, that's that. And we're going to get started and start working into darker areas. This is where we've got to at the end of the second day on the background and as you can see it's a lot darker in places up here. Um, these are still uh, tints, they're not, um, I haven't actually started the glazing on the background, that's the, that's the last thing that you do essentially. Um, but what I'll do after this is work more into the depth of the figure, it's only until you've actually got the background in that you realise how dark 
you'll you'll need to get on on these sort of shadowy areas. So everything will become way more um, part of the same environment, and that's when glazing comes into its its own again. And you'll be doing uh, doing glazing, you know, great big tubs, and you'll be uh, using a massive brush and going over the entire thing, and so it it, it unifies it essentially. Um, I'm also thinking of putting in a kind of a, a bit of a shadow around this area as well. Um, so he looks like he's actually really standing in this space. I wasn't sure whether I really wanted to do that, whether he wanted to be away from the background or whether he actually wanted to be part of the background. And that's something that I've been deciding on over the, the whole process of the painting. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Hi darling. Hey, so what I'm doing now is I've done quite a lot of the background um, to, a, to a certain lesser degree prior to glazing. Now between that layer and uh, what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing um, a, a bit of blending of the head into that background layer. And so it's wet into wet, using tints, going up here um, and, and sort of just letting the brush strokes sort of go into it, into the back. Um, and then after that, there'll be a glaze all over the top, and that will knock bits back and and, and make that uh, that grayed back into the background uh, way more subtle. Um, it looks quite flat at the moment. It should sort of be pushed backwards at the top, I think, and it will bring this face a bit forwards. And so that's that's what's going on now. So it gives me the opportunity to to finish off the hair. Um, before the glazing, the glazing starts. That's what's going on. Back on. Okay. So I was going to say you could, um, like, um, uh, you know, like, just focus. So this is pretty much the final stage of this painting. I'm doing large areas of glaze. Uh, as you can see, I've just started on the top. Um, it's becoming more saturated, more depthy. Um, this is also blending in this area that I painted in yesterday um, and making it appear uh, a bit more uh, translucent instead of opaque. So it's sort of blending into the background towards the top of the to the top of this um, using my um, thumbs and my fingers to smooth out um, the brush strokes and that's a, another way to, to make it nice and um, nice and even the glaze uh, it's what people have been doing for hundreds of years when it comes to glazing using their hands and and sculpting the paint um, that's something that I do a lot of so if you could actually um, put my paintings under a microscope you probably see a whole bunch of finger and thumbprints everywhere. Um, and then, yeah, I'll let you look at it once I've finished it today. Hopefully that will be done today. Cut. Um, I'm sorry, uh, well, the bit where I accidentally made some noise. <laughs> it's okay. That's okay. So here's the finished piece. The parts of this are darker, the shadows here are dark also. Um, I also went back into the face, picked out a few highlights and brought them back out again. Uh, now it's a case of it sitting in the studio and seeing if I'm sufficiently annoyed with it to work on it again. And, and, it, and it does uh, does work that way. Things that end up on the wall and I get pissed off with them and then I, they have to come back down and I'll work on them a bit. But I think, yeah, I think it's pretty much there. Um, yeah.